second. And good afternoon, the incoming Summerlin family. I am Command Sergeant Major Retired Cynthia Downey, and I am the Commandant of the uh, Academy. I want to welcome you this evening. This is a little different from us, for us uh, doing a virtual with you guys, and that's because of where we are at in today's society with a lot of virtual. We would prefer to have had you here to meet you and your, your young incoming cadet and welcome you to our academy, but that could not be done so today. So I wanna say welcome to you. We're gonna spend some time going over some of these slides with you, but I wanna to introduce to you several other people, even though I don't see their pictures. So I'm hoping you all have your cameras on my, my team here. Um, next slide. Hey, hang on. I was letting people in. Okay. All right. Well, let me give you a few minutes, and, and there then you I go. want to welcome those. Go back, please. I'll tell you when. Thank you. Okay. And for you guys that just came in, she was letting you all in. I want to welcome you again to the Summerlin family, and we are a family here at the Academy. I'm very proud to be the Commandant, and Commandant will equate to you as the principal of this school. Uh, I am Command Sergeant Major Retired Downing. I spent 25 years in the United States Army. I spent 11 years teaching JROTC, became a dean, and now I am running the best academy in the Southeast region. Um, Today, we will have several people that will be giving you briefings, introducing themselves to you and telling you a little bit about what you should expect next year. I have my assistant principal, Major Honorable Todd Simmers. The senior army instructor is Colonel George Pettigrew. Could you go back, please? And I have the, the, the guidance counselor, Ms. Brister. Now, we have 49 people on. So I know there's gonna be a lot of questions that you all will have. We have a chat button at the bottom. We will ask that you write your questions, questions in the chat and you can do that as I'm go we're going through the slides and we'll go through those questions and try to answer as many as we can before our time is up. Even if we don't get to your question, we will do a FAQ and we will also send it out to you all so that, you can, so that we will be able to answer your questions. So with that said, we will begin. Um, Ms. Brister, please go to the next slide. Now this slide really depicts those character traits and attributes that we hope to instill in your cadets when they come through our school. Um, pride, that self-discipline, honor. Every morning here at this academy, we honor our flag in this country. Uh, we have a formation out in our quad area. We salute our flag as the national anthem is being played, as well as the pledge. Uh, we want uh, our scholars, we want them to be prepared to lead. Next slide. And right now, um, this is pr pretty much what the, um, the, uh, the four pillars that we really think that really tells us, make that entire, that whole person concept, that good citizenship, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, scholarship, academic, honor, and leadership. And this is what we live off, those four pillars at this academy. And, we're, and, and basically through the four years that they're here, those are things that will be embedded into their um, in, uh, academics here, and, and, and what we teach them um, in class and out of class. Next slide, please. Next, thank you. What is Summerlin? Well, first of all, we are so proud of our academy. We have received a, nas a national recognition as a model academy from the National Career Academy Coalition Accreditation. Two consecutive times, 2015 and 2019, we have received that um, model academy accreditation. Tells us a lot because it's a very, very strict accreditation and uh, we were recognized for both uh, 2015 and 2019. We are also a public school of choice, public high school school of choice uh, that is uh, conducted in a military structured environment. So what does that mean? Does that mean that we're trying to get your kids in the military? Not at all. As a matter of fact, um, probably less than 20% of our 
students go into the military, but that military structure that we instill in them those four years basically prepares them for post-secondary, um, whatever they decide to do. Um, we are very proud of how that works. Uh, our instructors, our, uh, will we'll tell you a little bit about those guys in a little while, but we also have other classes as well. But um, these kids learn the, the basics of leadership, the basis of management, teamwork, and so forth. And one of the great things and unique things about this academy is it's cadet-led. These kids are put into um, uh, leadership positions um, where they're leading, planning, managing any type of activities. They manage each other. And our instructors pretty much over give them oversight. They do a lot. They learn how to brief. Even your shy kid will at one point, you will see them just grow and transform into a person that you would truly be amazed when you see these young people um, work at what they're working at, what we're teaching them. Next slide. So what do we offer? We offer them opportunity to excel, the possibility to reach their dreams. And we're gonna transform that young person into being a, an, an adult. Now, this sometimes is kind of hard for parents. You're gonna have your little babies come home to you, mama, I'm crying because my whole life is falling apart. They're so mean to me or this, that. And then you're gonna have them come home some days where they're just the most motivated young person you ever heard and seen. What we do here is we're trying to pull them to take care of themselves here. When I say take care of themselves, when we, we send things out, we're saying we want parents out of it. Your, your child should be doing a lot of things on, them, on, their, on their own. A lot of times we won't even talk to you because, well, we want, we're going to pick their classes for them. Oh, we need to get them signed up. No, let your babies, because they won't be babies long, do this because you, they've got to transform. They've got to learn because four years from now, parents, I, I hate to break the bad news to you, you won't be able to do that when they go into the workforce or even when they go to college. So we're trying to, little bit by little bit, what they're releasing you're releasing that to them and making sure that they're growing. So we're going to transform that young person to a responsible adult. Next slide. This is our mission. Basically, we are wanting to motivate young people to be better citizens. And we do that by promoting, um, next slide, please, by uh, promoting academic achievement. Next slide. Uh, personal accountability. This is huge for us. They have to take charge of their own learning. They need to take responsibility, whether it's good or bad. Um, they need to hold themselves accountable. We deal with things all the time with parents calling, but th those kids know I have to wear a uniform on Monday. It's not your responsibility to wake them up, wash their clothes, get them in their uniform. Because I've heard this parents telling me, well, I didn't do Johnny's uniform. Well, I'm not going to, we, we're not going to look at that because Johnny should be taking care of Johnny's business. We want them to be academically, men mentally, and physically fit. Uh, actually, the kids are out uh, two days, or at least once a week, where we take them out and they do what we call physical training. They love it. Um, and then we want them to be the best person they can be. So, you know, we put them in those situations and they do very well. Next slide, please. Civic responsibility. Here at this academy, anyway, one of the biggest things is they will have to earn 150 community service hours to earn our um, Summer Diploma and Medallion, which is uh, awesome. You'll, you'll learn more about that later on uh, during your stay here at the Academy. But we want them to have self to service. They usually feel really good about themselves when they do the community service. We do a lot of things within our community as a group and we give opportunities to kids all over Polk County to ensure that they get those 150 hours. It should be no reason for them not to. Every year we do what we call a service learning project and these kids do a great job, whatever they're working on, and they do nice briefings to us and let us know what they're doing, but they get a sense of pride and they learn to be selfless through these uh, community service and service learning projects. Next slide. Leadership. This is what we're about. We are a leadership school. Even though it is a, a, a military academy, we are a leadership school. They're going to be uh, learning to be reliable, committed, organized, self-disciplined. Um, we want them to seek opportunities. We want them to grow 
and we want them to want to take a charge and lead. And you, you will see them as they go through their uniforms every year, they're earning ranks and they're earning ribbons and things to put on their uniform. They're put in positions of authority. It's, uh, set up just like if any of you have been in the military, we have our formations, we have a regiment, where we have a regimental commander and he has his staff as well as every one of the battalion commanders. Feel, those are the young people that are doing that. And they're learning that leadership along with that teamwork, along with the uh, you know, uh, responsibility of taking care of each other. So we're very proud of our young people and they do very well. Next slide, please. And we also have our captain's council. Our captain's council is our parents group. It's a very strong group. We're doing very well with that. They are very supportive of our young people and our, um, and our students as well. We want to, you guys to please consider joining. We have a council meeting every quarter and we have our executive committee every month and they do great things for the school and for the kids. And with that said, I am going to pass this on to Ms. Brister, our counselor, who you will be talking with quite a bit. Ms. Brister. Welcome. Um, so we, you know, we are a military academy, but you know, you want to keep in mind that we're also preparing them for whatever post-secondary plan that they want. So they participate in all the things that the other high schools in the county do, such as this picture shows the Superintendent Scholar Award Ceremony. And that's all the seniors that have a 3.8 in their seventh semester, which is halfway through their senior year. If they have a 3.8 or higher, they get to go to a special assembly with the superintendent and their principal, and they wear their class Bs that you see there. And well, actually those are class A's, I guess. And they stand up and say where they're gonna go to college and what they're gonna major in. And it's just a wonderful ceremony. That's just one example of some of the things that they'll participate in with the county. So we do like to consider ourselves like a prep school. We're gonna get them prepared for whatever post-secondary um, plan they have. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the classes that we offer here at Summerlin. That's um, often the biggest question. Um, one thing that I hope that you've already done is looked on the website because we have quite a bit of information to try to help you get familiar with what we have since we couldn't shadow because of COVID. So um, before I go into the classes, I do wanna remind you, um, uh, Remind is an app that you can get on your phone and we do require that every student has this. If for some reason a student doesn't have a phone, they can also use a tablet or they can have Remind on a computer, but all students are required to use Remind. That is our school-wide um, uh, communication system. So if Colonel Pettigrew wants to send out um, you know, some information about uniforms or a change or something, then it's going to go out on Remind. Any, any, anything that we want to get out school-wide is going to go to Remind. So the only way that parents and students are going to be able to keep up is by having Remind. So we do expect that at least one parent gets these announcements as well. I have an email that will be going out later today and it's going to have the code and it's going to have directions for making that account. And we just want to do this because it does keep us unified as a school. It keeps you and the parents in the loop and it keeps the students being responsible for what they're supposed to do. All right, so we we have honor courses um, like, you know, where you get an extra weight uh, if you're if that's a high performing student and um, you know, they do that kind of work. We're going to put them in honors classes. If they want AP classes, there are certain classes that they can do AP in. And AP, you'll learn more about it as you go if you don't already know about it. That's an opportunity to work at a college level and then take a test at the end of the year that if you make a certain score, you can actually earn college credit. Um, it looks good on a tra um, your transcript when you're applying to college. We also mm -hmm. offer dual enrollment and there's strict criteria. No, this is where they're talking about the classes. They have um, Kendo. Okay, so I'm not sure who it is. Kendo, hey, did you see the me, Kendo? Everybody needs to check. You want to do that for a police officer? You need to know how to defend yourself. Ma'am, everybody needs to check their um, um, computer and put mute on because you might not have realized that we could hear you. <laughs> so make sure that you're on mute if, it, you know, so that you don't, whenever anything happens in your house, we don't hear it. <laughs> so dual enrollment um, won't happen in ninth grade. So most of you are in the ninth grade, but it could happen in 10th grade. And we'll tell you more about that as time goes on. Everybody takes ROTC and there's a lot of ROTC electives that Colonel Pettigrew is gonna talk to you about. 
For the Summerlin Honorary Diploma, we require two years of language. So some people have had Spanish in middle school, uh, a high school Spanish, and that's fine. But if you come in with no uh, high school language, you're gonna pick Japanese, Russian, or German. Um, you're gonna get something in writing that helps you understand how to pick your classes. You'll get that in writing soon. We also have SCUBA, that's available for seniors. Equestrian is a four-year program, so you definitely, if you're interested in horses, you want to start that in the ninth grade. Um, we also have sent out to you a link if you're interested in coming out to the farm. And because it's outdoors, we weren't restricted with COVID. We could, we could have some guests outdoors to view the farm and find out a little bit more about Equestrian um, in person. So if you're interested in Equestrian, look for the link in your email and sign up to come out. We do need an RSVP because we have to make sure we know how many people are going to be out there. Ms. We Christ, have... I'm going to cut in on you right there. Mm -hmm. We are allowing 10th graders if they come in for their first year to take Equestrian as well. So they don't have okay. to start at night. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's, that's wonderful. So Kendo is um, martial arts with uh, like swords and we have one of the most famous Kendo uh, instructors and Kendo judges on our campus, um, Maida Sensei, that's, uh, he's very well known in the Kendo world. So phenomenal class. Most people that take Kendo want it every year. We also have an amazing lacrosse team and we're fortunate enough to have a class at the end of the day. So the students that are on the lacrosse team can have that as a class. Now we have um, some reciprocal agreements with Bartow as far as some of their academies that uh, our students are allowed to be in. For instance, the medical and the firefighting academy, it's a very strong academy. They're welcome to pick classes from that. They can be in band, they can be in orchestra, they can take digital design, which is a, a very important thing to know going into college. Um, and also if they're an athlete, they can um, take, if they're on the team and the coach asks for them to be in that class, football, baseball, or softball, um, they can take a Bartow sports class if the coach puts them in the team. You're gonna get a little bit more information in this. So I'm just trying to give you an overview of the classes. So um, science, uh, there's a variety of sciences and we have biology, AP classes like AP biology, we have environmental science, chemistry, forensic science, physics, anatomy and physiology, which is usually taken in the upper um, grades, especially for somebody that's interested in the medical field. We have a sequence that these classes go in, um, but I wanted to give you a sense of the classes that we have here. And they're very much like um, traditional high schools, but we have a lot of unique classes as well. So you have your typical English one through four. Once you get into 11th and uh, 12th grade, you can take AP English. Um, US history, world history is in honors as, as well. American government and, um, and economics, they, they have um, regular and honors. And then we have several AP history classes, AP US history, AP world history, and AP human geography. We have a new class called um, African American um, History, and that's a semester class. And then the partner to it for the second semester is Personal Financial Literacy, which helps students understand how banking is done, personal banking and personal finance. And those are very trendy classes and a lot and very popular right now. Okay, so the foreign languages, um, you know, they they they're very uh, rigorous. They do. We're fortunate. All of our instructors are could go into that country and live there, and you would never. I mean, you, our Russian teacher is from Russia. Our our Japanese teacher is from Japan, and I don't think our German teacher is from Germany. But if he was in Germany, you wouldn't know the difference. So uh, at some point, they're going to be speaking that language in that class. So they're very very good about getting them. Um, up to speed in the language. So again, we do require two years for the honorary Summerlin diploma. So math, we have your basic math courses, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calc, calc, you can just go all the way up and then um, some students take dual enrollment. Let me, somebody has their mic on. If you can please check your mic. I think it's Ashton, you have your mic on. Thank you. So I mentioned equestrian earlier. Equestrian is an amazing um, elective to take because if you went and paid for the lessons that you're going to get in the class, it, you, you know, most of us, I know I couldn't afford those lessons. So the, the first semester you're in the class learning about 
the horse and things like that. You're not on the horse yet. Second semester, they bring the horse out to the um, little pasture in the classroom. But the, the last three years, you you go to the farm on a bus every day for that, I mean, every class um, on the farm. And so you are riding. And some people do it just for the class. They enjoy the class and they don't want anything more out of it. And other people, they become very interested in it and they compete and they go on trips and um, you know they make it kind of like a, a very you know strong um, extracurricular activity. So you have a choice. You can just have it as a class, or you can have it as, as a class and then participate even further in competitions. And that is a picture of kendo. They have different um, uniforms, and that's the headgear that they wear, so that you know, like they, they, nobody's going to get injured. So we're very safe here, just so you know. <laughs> um, and this is scuba. And if you go on our elective website, you'll see a, a really interesting video that we have for scuba. So that's something to look forward to senior year. So what does your first year look like? This It may look like this. You're going to have a math and an English always. You're probably going to have science and history, and you're going to have ROTC, and you're going to have an elective, and you're going to have foreign language. That's probably what your schedule is going to look like. There are some variances. If we have students that come in that need some help in reading, we do offer the reading class to get them up to speed because obviously we want them to graduate. Um, so sometimes you come in with high school credit and that helps you have more electives. But that is a typical um, schedule right there. So it would be actually two electives, I said one. So that's your typical first year schedule. So you're gonna get more information uh, sent to you about this and then uh, all the students need to get on Remind as quick as possible because the link to sign up is going to be electronic and that is going to be sent on Remind. And I think that is my last slide and our senior Army instructor, Colonel Pettigrew, is going to talk to you about ROTC and the ROTC classes. You're, um, Colonel, you're gonna need to unmute. Let me see, maybe I need to do it for you. There you go, I can hear you now. Thank you, Mrs. Brister. You're welcome. Thank you, introduction there, and I'm, uh, I wanna speak briefly about something that's near and dear to my heart, and that's JROTC. Um, pleased to have the opportunity to work here in the Summerlin Academy and uh, to offer to all young people this amazing program. It's called the Junior Reserve Officer Training Program, or JROTC. And I'm proud to say that the Summerlin Military Academy is second to none to any other program in the district, county, or the state. Um, our staff of six instructors, all of whom have over 20 years of military experience, are uniquely qualified to provide a rich learning experience for each of our cadets. And as you can see there, we have a right, we started off with one of our major electives here. We accomplished all of our training and all of our learning uh, by teaching over 700 hours of classroom instruction that's given over a four year period of time and by offering an array of award winning electives. Our first elective I want to speak about is our JRTC marksmanship program. Uh, our program uh, is designed around primarily our sporter and our precision rifle teams. And both of these teams operate out of a state of the art rifle range right here on campus that is fully automated and, and computer operated as well. We have some of the finest young people here in the state, all pretty much most of all of them are award-winning individuals who have won competitions locally and also out of state as well. And as you can see, you, you can compete both in both matches and both in and out of state, and you can qualify quite easily to be a member of our JRTC marksmanship team. Next slide, please. As you can see also, this is what, this is a team we call our precision team. Our precision team, they utilize some very unique and very interesting rifles. They're all pellet guns, not actual bullets in there, but they're pellet guns, which uh, through the use of our computer operated and uh, uh, state of the art facility, enable them to learn the key fundamentals of good marksmanship. And uh, as I stated earlier, they are uh, competitive both in state and out of state. Next slide, please. 
Another one of our electives is our precision and basic drill team. Uh, our drill team individuals and cadets have competed locally as well as out of state. And as in the case of the rifle teams, they've won tremendous awards over and over again, year after year in both of these state and local competitions. Next slide, please. And here you see our drill team there, you know, relishing the moment and just, you know, savoring the thought of knowing they've just won another competition. And what, you, what, you look, what you're looking at them right now is, is in their class B uniform. And it's really what they always compete in when they go either in state or out of state. Next slide. Now, if you're looking for something that's high adventure uh, to improve your physical fitness, you need look no further than our award-winning Raider team. Now, our Raider team is designed around the whole concept of teaching teamwork, mental and physical strength and endurance, and of course, character development. Uh, as you can see there, the Raiders are composed of both male and female. Uh, there's a, it's, a, it's a pretty rigorous program. They're training constantly. Uh, they're, they're building their bodies up. Uh, they're empowering themselves as individuals to become leaders within their Raider organization and also to provide leadership to other organizations outside of GROTC as well. And if you're if looking around the various parts of our, our, our district and our state, you'll, you've probably seen young, young people who have been in the Raider organization and have developed, as, as the commandant said, has been transformed over time because that organization itself really develops the mind, the body, and the heart and soul of each of our, each of our cadets. Next slide, please. Now, just to make, make sure I'm clear with everybody, this is a JROTC leadership program as stated by our commandant. But there are so many facets and so many aspects of this program that you will never get anywhere else but in a JROTC program such as ours. Uh, we teach, as I said earlier, over 700 hours of classroom instruction and that classroom instructions over a period of four years involves oral communications, first aid, map reading, uh, fitness, history, uh, you name it. And as you can see on the slide, it, it goes on and on talking about all the various types of classes that your student will be able to uh, participate in and learn in as they advance themselves year after year in JROTC. And of course, you know, being a leader, you need to be able to know how to manage organizations. You know, you know how to be a, be a pro effective problem solver and a critical thinker. And those are the kind of skills, those transferable skills that your young person will get uh, by having participated in our GRTC program. When they leave our program, they'll be ready and prepared to assume any kind of role, leadership role or otherwise, within our in our society. Next slide, please. Now this gives you a little overview of what each and every each, each and every one of our classes, our, our academic classes will look like. Our let ones or freshmen uh, will actually participate in, in personal development and leadership classes, acclimatization in terms of the weather, because of course it's kind of hot down here in Florida. And our summer JCLC program or summer camp, uh, we need to make sure that they are, are ready for that when that time comes around every summer. Our second year student or our sophomores or let two, uh, we get more into an informal small group leadership training, how to manage a meeting, how to orchestrate and how to participate within a uh, higher organizational program, such as a core or a regiment, which is what they're involved in here. Our third year students or let threes get more involved in unit leadership. They become leaders within their respective company, within their respective battalion. Um, we've acquaint them with college and career readiness and preparation. And we help them at that point, they haven't, if they haven't already done so, we help them start thinking about life after high school, preparing for college uh, and developing their minds and thinking along those lines. Uh, and there's, there's also a, a, a number of activities that they engage in uh, and they're given the opportunity to participate in on campus and also off, off campus, which helped them with their planning and their organizing and coordinating. In the last year, uh, our let four, our seniors, they're pretty much given full reign of the entire regiment at that time. 
they are required over, over, over the last, over the, over the previous three years to have, to have learned certain skills that you probably wouldn't get elsewhere, but in a GRRTC program. And once they've achieved the rank of LET4 and, and, the, and the category of LET4, then they'll be ready to assume responsibility for the entire regiment in terms of unit leadership, whether it be a company, uh, whether it be a squad, whether it be a battalion, or even the regimental side of the house. Uh, we teach all of our young people how to um, make decisions and how to organize their thoughts, to plan, to coordinate, and to establish a, a functional role within the organization and also in their personal lives. Many of our young people assume leadership roles outside of GRTC once they've had a chance to learn those fundamentals here in our program. They work in their local church, they work in the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts. Uh, they participate in other functions within the community. Uh, so again, the, the benefits of this program are far reaching. And if you're looking for someone, a young, a young person who's gonna be well-rounded and ready and, and fully equipped to advance to any other component within our society, this is the place to be. Next class, next, next slide, please. Within our program, uh, there are some the fundamental grooming standards and we'll get more and more in detail about those standards as we go along, but to, suffice to say that our cadets will be expected to maintain those grooming standards throughout the entire time here at the academy. Um, and especially when wearing the uniform, it's important that the cadet understands the importance of the uniform and the history of the uniform, and that they're not really honoring the uniform for themselves, but they're honoring it for all those who wore the uniform long before they even came along and for those who are concurrently in uniform as well, serving overseas in combat areas. So again, uh, grooming is important. Uh, every, our uniforms are, are, are precision and also a very intricate part of who we are in the academy. Next slide. We have a variety of uniforms that we participate in, we actually wear throughout the week. On Monday, we have our Army Service uniform, and you saw that uniform earlier. We had our Class A's, uh, when, it was, when it was depicting the, the, um, the awards for our scholar athletes, that's a class A uniform. We have a, a, a jacket, a blue jacket, uh, blue trousers, and of course a gray shirt with a tie. Uh, that's the Army Service uniform. Um, the cadets, if they are a let four, they will have the opportunity to wear the entire uniform. If, they are, if the cadets are a let one, two, or three, they will only wear a class B uniform versus a class A uniform with both with the jacket on. That class B uniform is, is vitally important to their development and their growth and appreciation of the uniform. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, our, our cadets are in their PT uniform. Now, they don't, that doesn't mean we have PT both days. Depending on their classes, they will have PT either on Tuesday or on Wednesday, uh, in, in which case they will wear their PT uniform, physical fitness training uniform. And that will include a, a tan t-shirt and some, uh, some even black shorts. On Thursday, there's a class C uniform. For our let fours, class C would also uh, involve wearing of the uh, army, uh, the army uniform involving military uh, operations other than just, you know, for instance, in our, uh, a combat, Army combat uniform. Army combat, uh, Army combat uniform. Uh, but for Thursdays and, and Fridays, the bulk of the regiment, that ones, twos, and threes, they'll be wearing their classy uniform, which includes the uh, black polo and tan trousers. And depending on the weather, of course, they may be wearing tan shorts as well. Um, and for special events that occur throughout the year, uh, we will. It, depending on the event, they may be wearing a classic uniform during, during those events as well. We have events such as the 9-11 ceremony. We have Veterans Day. We have also our military ball. Uh, those are events in which our cadets may be wearing either a class A or a class B uniform. Next slide, please. Now, all of our uniforms uh, are derived from a from our vendor of choice, which is, uh, which is the Reese Brothers, and they're located in, in Lakeland, Florida. Uh, your uniforms can be purchased there um, each and every year. If, if, if for whatever reason your, your son or daughter grows out of the uniform, uh, it gets, of course, they're going to grow in, in case it's no longer wearable for them. They can always go back and they can purchase uniforms there as well. Um, next slide. 
Another aspect of our program is our military ball. Now, the military ball itself is really a spinoff of our uh, one of the various traditions of our military. The military, uh, one of our one of our fundamental traditions is that we offer time throughout the year, throughout uh, either a year or over a period of time, when we come together as as soldiers, as military personnel, and we socialize. And we've extended the opportunity to JROTC to do the exact same thing. Young people can come together once a year in a formal setting where they are exposed to some of our military traditions when it comes to, our, comes to uh, a, a formal event, and they dress up. Uh, the young men, the young, young cadets, they come in there with their Class A uniforms on, uh, and the young ladies are dressed up and adorn themselves in their various formal, formal dresses. It's a spectacular event, and the cadets, they, really, they get a ball out of it, no pun intended, but they get a, get a, ha, have a great time on that evening and they get a chance to socialize away from the rigor of the Raiders and the marksmanship and, and drill and just enjoy each other and have some great fellowship uh, in a great place, you know, where we are within the, uh, within the district and in, within the county. Next slide, please. One of the beauties of, of our program is that, you know, our, our cadets, even though they're not uh, functionally at Bartow Academy, and because Bartow um, High School, IB, and some of them, they're, they're somewhat, you know, joined to the hip, so to speak. They're all cooperative with each other. All of our cadets can also participate in any club or activity that goes on at Bartow High School. Uh, they can play in any sport uh, at Bartow High School. So none of our cadets need to feel as if they're being deprived of any kind of way of participating in any kind of activity that's going on there from a sports perspective at Bartow. One thing we do require of our cadets though is that whenever they do participate in any events or sports over in, in, Bar in Bartow High School is that they still maintain the image, they maintain the discipline, they maintain the requirements that we, that we, that we share with them about being a cadet. They should always look and act like a cadet. Uh, that's part of the growth and developmental process of being a Summerlin cadet. Next slide, please. Okay, so are we gonna let um, uh, AP take over here? Okay, I'll be followed by our AP, uh, Mr. Todd Summers, thank you. Hello, uh, good evening everybody. I'm the assistant principal, uh, Major Honoré Simmers. Uh, I'm glad to have you guys here and excited to go over this section of the uh, presentation this evening, which is our capstone project. Um, it's one thing to remember here in this four-year journey, it's a marathon and not a sprint. So uh, one thing or several times you would hear from our Commandant, from our amazing guidance counselor, and our senior Army instructor, Colonel Pettigrew, is real-world readiness and preparing individuals to be model citizens and get ready for the real world, whether that be college or career readiness. The Capstone Project is basically a four-year um, journey where we allow our students to explore their interests. Uh, this is unique. Um, you won't necessarily find this at other traditional high schools. Um, and so they, they embark on this, this process. Um, over, uh, there's also summer enrichment that, that they'll have that ties into this. And, and that's why the remind is really important to make sure that you guys get on that because Ms. Brister is gonna be sending several things out um, throughout the year in all aspects. Uh, next slide, please. So when it comes to the uh, capstone, really there'll be four um, major components of it over the four years. Uh, a digital portfolio that the students will build. That's where they'll keep all their research and everything they do as far as logging hours, their internship, community service. Um, and, and just the examples, whether it be photographs or videos of what they're doing. Um, there's an APA style paper that they'll do about the experience. It's research based that is aligned with the English curriculum. So it's really an amazing opportunity to build their writing skills at the same time. Um, there's a final product that's the end product of everything they've done that happens in their senior year um, that will be due. And that basically um, encompasses everything they've done. So for example, um, if they have uh, created a business model, um, they, they give a professional presentation, which is the fourth, 
fourth aspect of this. The professional presentation um, allows them to work on their public speaking skills and showcase uh, what they've accomplished over the four year period and with all the experiences and research. Um, next slide, please. Um, go back one, please. Thank you. So part of this, um, there's 10 strands that are within the capstone and I'll just um, give those examples really quick when it comes to uh, the decisions that you're able to make. Um, and these are examples of what your capstone may look like or, or be, um, you can create um, your own business. Uh, it could be tied to a community service project, um, you know, maybe um, helping out somewhere in the community. Um, extended learning, uh, as far as like an internship, you can create a, a product or design. You might find something that you can improve on if you're inventive. Um, a leadership project where you take something on. We have several um, cadets that throughout the year find amazing ways to help out the school and they take on a leadership role and they organize it, put it together um, and see it through um, and create teams. A research project, you might uh, look at uh, how to, um, you know, combat uh, pollution in your local area, that would be one example, um, or work-based learning. You might actually go out into the field um, and, and learn to be a veterinarian. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> so uh, really when it comes to this academy, what I've found is it's a diamond in the rough. So it is a lottery and I really feel like that's exactly what's happened. So if you're in here, congratulations. Um, you're at a very unique high school experience that has amazing opportunities um, like, like no other, as Colonel said, second to none. Um, the, other, the other thing that I've noticed is ninth graders, how fast they mature. It's an amazing opportunity. I've, I've, um, I've seen other schools, I've been at other schools, and I've watched the progression of young men and women, and the amount of accountability and leadership that occurs in a young man or woman in a very quick turnaround from ninth grade is just, I can see it from the moment they walk in, um, where, you know, there is an adjustment period, and, and that's okay. But that adjustment period and that learning curve moves so fast um, and the buy-in is real. And so that's an amazing thing. Uh, something near and dear to my heart is making sure you're ready when you walk across that stage in four years at the RP Funding Center that you're ready. And that's it. College and career. Um, whatever you want to uh, pursue, we provide that vehicle. We provide that opportunity for you to reach those goals. And we have an amazing team of teachers that will help you along the way explore those different options. Um, you know, and so that, that's really uh, something that, you know, I have, to, I have to pump the brakes because I'll keep talking for a long time because this is a passion. And I know we've been in here for a while, but that's why I said it's a marathon, not a sprint. I would like to plug again the importance of Remind. It's like leaving your house without your car keys. You're not going to get very far. So Ms. Brister really does an amazing job with that remind. Make sure you get that because so much vital information comes out to the parents and the students on that. It's like a lifeline. So please make sure that you guys do that as well. And I'm so excited to do, go on this journey with you, period. So anything we can do to help, uh, like I said, we're ready. Uh, next slide, please. And thank you. Okay, that is awesome. I want to thank my team for going through. I, like I said, it's a little difficult because we can't see your faces. We can't actually meet you guys until next year. Um, but uh, the, two, the few things before we start the questioning, I do want to make highlight to you guys. Some of you will be coming in as 10th graders and some will be coming 11th grade. Um, you will start with a, as a let one if you have not had any JROTC experience. That would depend. I know that slide said let one was all, we're all um, um, freshmen, but that's not how that works. It all depends on how many years you have had the course. I do want to uh, just say this one thing. You guys will have the opportunity to meet your teachers when you get here. We have an amazing, amazing group of teachers here that don't work off of time. They spend a lot of time at this academy. Sometimes I have to kick them out, but the bottom line is this, they are invested in ensuring that your children are getting the best education that we could possibly give them. And I'm so proud of the, some of the things that they do. And they're part of that team. They're out there in the formations with our kids. They're talking to them because we work as a team. So, you know, the classes are a little smaller on this side, 
but we do have Bartow kids that come onto our classes and some of our kids go over to Bartow, but our classes, you just, you kind of get that home feel. And we are a family here. And, I, and, that, and that's one of the great things about the academy, that we want you all invested in your children. We want you to be a part of everything that we do. And um, the last thing I do want to put out, uh, we are taking, if you know of anybody that missed the lottery, they have an opportunity now to actually, and I'm talking without a camera on, so I'm so sorry, I appreciate, I'm so sorry. But they have an opportunity for the next couple of weeks to come up and pick up a paper app or call us ahead of time and maybe we can send it to them. So if you know of anyone that's interested, we are allowing a few more people to come in. We have some open seats. So, but it'll be first come first serve. So at this time, if you all have any questions, there's 53 people on, so I'm assuming if we cut the mics on, it might be a problem, but I see nothing in chat. So I'm, I'm assuming that you all have a chat. If you want to put any questions in there, we will be glad to answer those questions now. I have two questions. I'll read them out. Uh -huh. So the first question is, I heard that high schoolers need to earn a certain number of volunteer hours before they graduate. How many volunteer hours do the kids have to earn? Do you want okay. me to answer or you want to answer it? Um, in high school, it, that's up to the kid if they want to do that. But here at the academy, you must earn 150 community service. We want our kids to get between 37 to 38 hours per year. Um, we make sure that though we, we're, we're giving them those opportunities, they just have to take those opportunities. Um, right now, the numbers are different because of COVID, um, because I had to suspend a lot of those hours because of COVID. And so we knocked it down. Like this year's graduating class will only need 90 hours to get our summer diploma. Any other school is great to have that, but it's not a requirement for young people to have community service hours. It looks good for colleges though, if you, if you have a child that's going to college and some colleges may want, they, they will look at that, but it's not a requirement. Next question. It's also, um, it's required for some scholarships too. And right. that's why we have all these requirements is we, at the end of your four years, we want you to be eligible for anything because we know people's minds change about what they want to do. So the next question is, is the Criminal Academy, I think they mean Criminal Justice Academy, available for Summerlin students to take? Unfortunately, that's one of the academies that we did not select that you can take um, with that. We had to choose a few academies, but to keep our, uh, our school true to what it's about, we had to take some of those academies away. We didn't have a lot of kids in that academy. So we are not allowing our kids to get into Criminal Justice Academy. We do have dual enrollment courses right now for criminal justice because we have a, a teacher that is qualified to do that. But as far as the academy, no. You would, that would be something you might want to make a decision on, on whether you want to come here or not because we do not offer it. Also, Commandant, real quick before we go to the next question, um, that's, that's another uh, really unique thing about the capstone is it will allow you to explore that career, um, career choice and career path over your four years. So it's not necessarily the same as the academy. They'll be, they'll be different, but we can provide opportunities for you to explore and grow and even potentially get an internship at one of the uh, local precincts potentially. Uh, that would be you though. You'd have to drive that bus as, as far as uh, making sure that those things happen. So there, that is the one cool thing about the capstone. I'd like to, one of the, one of the many. And the next question is, can we do ag at Bartow? No, no ag either. Ag is not open, but if you take a question that gives you into the ag uh, to, to be able to join FFA, and uh, those are the only ones that will be able to um, at least get something, some part out of ag, which would be the FFA, um, but you'd have to take a question. Next. How much are the uniforms? The uniforms, we don't know how much they're selling them for right now because right now, and I'm, I'm glad somebody brought that question up because um, Rise, I believe those shirts are 30 and I can't remember how many pants. I want you guys to look on that website because this is the first year that we've allowed a company to, you guys to go straight to the company. You can go to the company or you can buy and order those uniforms online from them. Um, and, and you can decide what sizes you want and what, how many you want. But that is the only place because we are a military unit. We all have to look alike. I can't have 50 shades of pants and 50 styles of pants. Everybody looks alike. So that's where you have to buy your uniform. They know exactly what you need and what you're supposed to have. And that way we look like one organized unit and we look the same. Thank you. 
you're probably going to pay a lot less for uniforms, like a whole lot less than if you were trying to buy clothes to keep up with the trends, because you're only going to have to buy Class C's and PT uniforms. The PT is a t-shirt and gym shorts, and the Class C is a black polo that says Summerlin, and then khaki shorts and khaki pants, depending on the weather. So um, you're, it, it's not going to, it's going to be less than if you were in a traditional school, and one day a week you're wearing something that you didn't pay for. And we're going to send out more information um, on the uniform so that you can go on and see that for yourself. Um, so is there bus transportation? Yes. Every, we, uh, based off because we are a um, choice school, buses will go out all throughout Polk County. We have kids at Four Corners, Osceola, Kissimmee, Lakeland, Payne City. Anywhere you live in Polk County, we will be, you will be able to get a bus provided a bus transportation. Can we get the uniforms from y'all? <laughs> no, you have to get the uniforms through Rice. Rizzi, the next, I think I said it right. Yeah, the, okay. um, probably that question came uh, before we yeah. answered the other one. How do you sign on Remind and select electives? I, I'll cover that. Um, I have an email that's gonna be sent out to you probably tonight that's gonna give you instructions on how to sign up on Remind. We suggest that you get the app on your phone and silence it so that it, you're just checking your app and you're not getting sounds and you're not getting text messages. Um, and then the things will be sent to you there. The same thing goes to the parent as a student, except for things that you sign up for, such as uh, community service hours or classes. And that's because you're using your student Microsoft account um, to, to do that. So you're going to get all this information um, one piece at a time. Uh, as, as we go through this process and I'm going to send it out to everybody at the same time on remind so you're all going to get an email with that and then once that email is sent then our correspondence should be on remind Ms. Um, Brister, mm -hmm. I just want to add one thing in, in regards to the uniform just to clarify one point and that is the only uniforms that will be purchased will be of course the, the class C uniform the polos the shorts trousers, the great, the uh, tan trousers, the military uniforms are provided by JROTC or the military, such as the, the, uh, the class A uniform, or the blue jacket, the blue trousers, uh, and the gray shirt. And of course, the shoes and ties and things, things that go along with it. So military uniforms provided, the uh, civilian uniforms, the uh, class Cs are uh, purchased by yourselves. All right, and then we have a question. Is there a choir? Uh, if you talk about a choir for, I'm not sure if they mean by choir, but if you want to take chorus, you can take it at the academy. I mean, over at Bartow, I'm sorry, at, at Bartow. And if you're really good, we're always looking for people to sing the national anthem. <laughs> um, the next question is, can you add me to the list? Okay, so if you're on here, then my thinking is that you are on the mailing list. Um, and if you're a student, we're gonna use your, your Polk County School email. So if you're from a private school, then you need to let us know your email. You can, you can email or have your parent email. But um, if you got on to this Zoom meeting, you should, we should have your email. And again, if you're a student, we're gonna use Polk County School email. Um, then the next question is, will the children be able to get the elective they want? Well, usually, Usually they do. I mean, we, you know, we do our very best to give um, the first choice. And sometimes if, if they get two electives, their second choice. So uh, most of the time, yes. There are some times when it's impossible, but most of the time, yes. I don't see any other questions. Um, so that may be, we, we did pretty good at 724, so we didn't have too long of a meeting. Um, Commandant, you just want to close out? Yeah, okay. Look, um, one of the biggest things we said earlier is that Remind, you all will also have the opportunity to send text messages through the Remind, but if you guys have any questions, pl please feel free to either email me. You can find my email address uh, under the Sumlin Academy uh, webpage or the AP or the counselor or call, but we don't want you confused. We want you coming in. This is very difficult uh, doing virtual because you don't have the opportunity to walk our campus like we would normally do and see what you're coming in, uh, what, 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 how you travel the campus as well as going over to Bartow. And uh, so 
please feel free to call us. We're very, very happy you selected our school. I, I promise you, you will enjoy this school. Um, most of our kids, when they get here, and we have quite a few that came that didn't want to come, you couldn't pay them to leave right now because it's a small community, a small family, um, and everybody is the same here. No one is better than the other. We kind of, we make sure that we hone on each other's strengths and we pick up those that are weak and no one is any different than anybody here and we treat everybody the same. So, you know, congratulations on your selection. We are very excited that you selected us. We can't wait to see you next school year. We will put out information constantly. Please check for all information. We want to do our um, uh, basic training, our cadet basic training, which we do for all incoming cadets. And we are waiting to get that written up and see if we get it approved. So, you know, stay tuned. If we're allowed to do that and we're given permission to do this during the COVID environment because we'll keep you safe, we have to have safety protocols. You guys have that opportunity to spend a week with us and learn all of the different things and come to the campus and learn to march, learn about a PT and learn about our traditions and our customs here at the Academy. So kind of stay tuned for that. We normally do that at the very end of July and that's what we're waiting for, writing our plan up right now and making sure that district will, will approve it. And if it's not approved, we won't have it this year, but hopefully we will. So I wanna thank you all for coming. And again, any questions you have, please make sure that you um, reach out to us. Have a blessed, blessed evening. And again, congratulations.